Welcome to this video lecture on graphs. Now, numbers tell a story. Or rather, numbers have a story to tell. But in order to hear that story, we need to look at the numbers in some way. And the best way to look at the numbers is in a graph. Take, for example, the heights of Irishmen. Now, I'm at a pretty typical height for an Irishman. Lots of Irishmen are the same height as me. Taller men are rarer. Much taller, rarer still. Shorter men, rarer than people like me. Shorter still, more and more rare. So when you put all that in a graph, as it shows on the cover of the textbook, Applied Statistics, um, most of the numbers are in the middle. But there's a pattern below of the smaller numbers and up above of the larger numbers. And they become increasingly rare. So a single peak in the middle, two similar tails. We call that a normal distribution because it is so normal. It happens a lot. Some data sets are not normal. For example, if you record the times that people wait for a taxi, there will be some very long times after a big event where all the taxis in the city are busy. You might be waiting a long, long time, so a long tail on the right. But the tail on the left is not so long. In fact, it can't go below zero, so it has to be short. So when you've got a graph like that, that's skewed, that's one-sided, you say that it's skewed or skewed to the right if it has a long tail on the right or positively skewed. Let's say you've got some potatoes in a supermarket and suppose those potatoes have been graded for size so there's no potato below a certain diameter or weight. Then all of the small ones will be missing. So it's like this bottom tail has just been cut off. We say that a graph like that is truncated. Truncated just means cut off, that all of the values below a certain value are missing, or all of the values above a certain value are missing. And that can happen when the data have been sorted and all the small ones are removed, or all the large ones are removed, or both of those things happen. If you think about, let's say, the weights of pets at a veterinary surgery, let's say the pets consist of both cats and dogs, and the dogs weigh more than the cats, there won't be one peak, there will be two peaks. A peak for the dogs, a peak for the cats. Dogs heavier than cats. So we call that bimodal. There are two common values. Let's say our graph consists of the ages of people who are on a football field during a game. Let's say the game is a game for an under 15 competition. All the players are under 15. But there's a referee who's like 30, way larger than all the others. So we've got one data point that's way bigger than everything else. We call that an outlier and it does distort the data. In some ways it shouldn't really be there. It's, it's like it's trying to tell a different story. So a histogram like this is a great way to display data and get a feel for what the numbers are saying. And the other way we can display data is in a time series chart, like a patient's temperature chart on their hospital bed, where it shows you how the numbers rise and fall as time goes past. And numbers will rise and fall as time goes past for no particular reason. If we look at the revenue of different businesses day to day, let's say over a 30 day period. So let's take a bakery and we look at these sales over a 30 day period. Of course, there's going to be some rise and fall. Different people are going to come into the shop on different days and there's going to be changes. But that's not really telling a story. That's just like noise in the data. A little bit of up and down movement, but things overall stay the same. We say that's just random variation. Get used to it. It's always there. It's like noise in the environment. Even though there's noise, you can still hear a story being told. And it's the same with a graph. Even though there's always noise, the numbers have a story to tell as well. Let's say you've got a hardware store and they're going along with a fairly steady rate of business. And then one day they open an online store as well, or a new department. The figures are going to jump that day and they're going to stay higher because now there's an additional source of revenue. We call something like that a shift, when the numbers go along and then rise to a new level and stay at that new level. Even though there's still some random variation, something important is after happening. And we call that a shift. It's a sudden and sustained change in the figures. Sometimes the figures change just for one day only, like a fashion store might have a one day sale. So the numbers are at a certain level and then woo, one day it spikes up and then back down again. So a sudden change in the figures that's not sustained is called a spike. Let's say you've got a new pharmacy and their daily revenue figures slowly grow because they're new in the area 
and their neighbours are only just finding out that they're there. So over time, the numbers slowly rise. There's always still random variation, but here there's an underlying story that business is growing as time goes by. We call that a trend, where there's a slow and steady movement, either going upwards or going downwards. And suppose you've got cinema revenue from day to day. You might notice as you track the cinema revenue over the course of a month that every weekend the numbers go up. Midweek they go down again because people like to go to the cinema at weekends. And so every week it's up then down, then up at the weekend, then down. Like a bicycle, the pedals go up and down, up and down. And so we call that a cyclical pattern, cyclical variation. It's like cycling a bicycle. The numbers go up and down in a regular rhythm. And if that rhythm is one year long, we call that seasonal variation because Year-long year variation is the most common cycle of all because lots of things um, vary on a yearly basis to do with just people's annual patterns of spending as well as the weather and other things. So all of these ways give us an opportunity to hear what story the numbers are telling us. You can find out more by reading chapter one of the textbook, uh, Applied Statistics, which you can find online.